to the Mark Watt Show. Hello, I'm Gene Stallings, and this is the Mark Watt Show. Get off the sideline and get involved and make a difference in your community. You are listening to the Mark Watt Show. My daddy is your host, Mark Watt. something good today. Welcome to another edition of the Mark White Show and the Mary Faye Hedrick Good Deed segment. I am your host, Mark White, and right now I have the pleasure of talking to Sass Edwards, and she is in France right now. Sass is a cancer mindset coach and also is the host of Real Health Talk. She is a motivational speaker, has many different activities that she takes on, but the main focus right now, of course, is cancer and our health, how we're dealing with it. One of the things that I found in Sass's message was the holistic approach. While there are those who say we must go through chemo or we must go through certain types of treatment to get better, Sass has a different angle, and I wanted her to share that with you today, not to cancel out any procedure or anything else that anyone is doing, but to just say this might be a viable option for you as an individual and just think about it. Welcome to the Mark White Show, Sass Edwards. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Hello, everybody. Glad to have you. Let's just jump right in. You do a program called Real Health Talk. That's right. Real Health Talk is really to focus on the, the, the real side of health. So, you know, we often think health is about um, taking medication or popping pills, you know, but we like to get down to the nitty gritty and the basics of the health, which is which is the person, which is how you feed your your body and, and your mind. And that goes into being a cancer mindset coach. That's right. I've been a cancer mindset coach for a couple of years now. Um, and really the focus, as, I, as you mentioned, you know, um, the idea is not to tell people what to do and what not to take. That's all personal decisions. But the focus is to really help people focus on their mindset. Because um, when it comes to the mind, for cancer, you're talking about 90% of it is working on your mind. If you can tell yourself that you're already healed, you could see yourself a couple of years down the line, how you want to be living, then you're already more than halfway there. And that, for me, is something that I, I personally experienced. That is an amazing concept that is unique to most ideas that we hear on a daily basis when it comes to our health and the issue of cancer. Share your cancer story, your own personal story with listeners. So personally, this is an ongoing story. So I'm going back um, 2009 when I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. So a cancer that my father had that he actually died from. So it's a quite a serious cancer. It's a, it's a tricky one to, to heal, actually. Um, when I was diagnosed back in 2009, I remember so many things going through my mind, like the why me? Well, what did I do wrong? I'm such a nice person, Mark. <laughs> so, you know, you turn to the, to the universe, you think, why me? I'm lovely. <laughs> and then I, I slowly, step by step, started to um, look a bit deeper into who am I? You know, it makes you step back and say, okay, so what is this all about? What is this life all about? Is it just to go to school, get a degree, get a job, um, hustle all your life until you retire or, or you're sick? And, and that's it. So I, I sort of like had a wake up call, if, you, if you'd like. And I said to myself, there's got to be something bigger to this picture, something I've been missing my whole life. That's why people say, I'm grateful for having had cancer because it wakes you up to what life has to offer you. So nonetheless, um, in 2009, I had radiotherapy, which actually wasn't successful. It didn't do the job that they'd hoped it would on a tumor. And then in 2012, we just kept an eye on the cancer. I had chemotherapy. Um, so like a, it was a year long process um, and it didn't work. This is the thing. I was like, okay, I've been through all of this, um, a whole year of chemo, put on 15 kilos, became sterile. Well, okay, I didn't want kids at the age of, of uh, 40, but still, <laughs> you know, and all that. And it still didn't work. So the doctors kind of sent me home and said, okay, sorry, Mrs. Edwards, but, you know, it didn't work. That can happen for some people. Each body is different. 
we'll just keep an eye on the blood test and just see, you know, if it goes, if it wakes up or whatever. So I went home a little bit um, um, dubious, like, where do I go from now? And then somebody put me in contact with um, a juicing technique. Uh, they said they had excellent results in juicing. So I spoke to my, my doctor, my, gen- my general um, practitioner, who said, well, you know, juice, he said for him, he's skeptical, but fruit and vegetables, we can't do any harm. <laughs> <laughs> so I did this juicing for five days every month for quite a few months. And I was still doing my blood tests on a regular basis. And guess what happened, Mark? Tell the me. cancer started to go down. Wow. It started to go down. And then my, my hematologist, the oncologist, said to me, what are you doing, Mrs. Edwards? She said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And so it got to a level where it wasn't healed, because multiple myeloma is a very tricky cancer to heal, because it's a blood cancer. However, it became dormant, stable for six years. Six years of, like, peace. <laughs> you know, so I was absolutely um, amazed that just fruit vegetables juiced not like um, smoothies but juiced there's something different about juicing which the body absorbs and when it comes to cancer it has a tremendous impact on the body and just taking that not even any supplements obviously I had become very um, um, different in my mindset I, I stopped thinking of myself like as a victim or as someone who's been forced into this world and didn't necessarily want to do what I was doing, like living in France wasn't really my choice. And I kind of thought myself victimized by the life that I had. Thoughts like that, if you already have the cancer in you or the gene from a parent, negative thoughts like that can trigger. It's a trigger. And so I started to put those thoughts to sleep and I started to um, become a coach. And that's where my life started to change. It was absolutely incredible. It really hits home with me when you talk about multiple myeloma. I actually didn't know specifically what type of cancer you had when we started this conversation. My grandfather, who raised me, was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, and he battled multiple myeloma, went through kidney dialysis through the process, and watched him, after about a year, pass away from multiple myeloma. I was a kicker in high school. I kicked a football, and not soccer ball, but an actual football. And I remember I had a back pain. And granddaddy began to have a back pain about the same time and kind of made a joke that we were both hurting in our back. Well, he didn't realize the pain in his back was actually cancer until he was diagnosed. And my grandmother took care of him and took care of the dialysis at home. I remember all the boxes that were in the basement for the dialysis. It looked like a a warehouse in the basement with all of the supplies that granddaddy had to go through at 68 years old at diagnosis there was no hope for granddaddy they said he was too old for any type of bone marrow transplant and so essentially they went through this all of this work my grandmother went through all of this work with granddaddy in hopes that this kidney dialysis this process they were going through would help cure him and there wasn't a cure and granddaddy was going to pass away from this cancer after a year. So it does hit home. He was my hero. He raised me from a young kid and I lost him to multiple myeloma. Yeah. Multiple myeloma is, is really the, one of the most difficult cancers. I, I know somebody who, who helps people heal from cancer through food alone. She's helped over 507 patients. Um, who were sent home to to die because the doctors had had said, well, there's nothing else we can do after doing all the treatments. And she helped everybody heal apart from one, and that was one someone who had multiple myeloma. So it is one of the most difficult cancers uh, to heal. They haven't yet found a cure, and um, they haven't yet understood why. Because I don't know about you, Mark, but for me, I'm like a child. I will always ask the question, why? <laughs> yes. Why? Why did I get cancer? And the doctors look at me like, what an absurd question. I'm like, no, it's the most logical question. It's the first question we should ask. Not, not to um, bring um, shame upon oneself or feel guilty, not, but just why do people get cancer? Why is, it, why is cancer more and more uh, predominant today? What is it about the way we're living? 
So these are sort of questions that I automatically ask myself. And I, as I said, again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professor in research, but I am a human. So I, I after having had cancer for, so I still have it because you, you can't cure multiple myeloma. So I've had it since 2009. So I would say I have, um, I have a doctor <laughs> in multiple <laughs> myeloma because I live with it. <laughs> so I know myself, I know at which moments my blood tests are gonna are gonna spike. What I've been going through, what I've been thinking, the stress factor. Although doctors will say, for the moment, scientists will say that there's no link between stress and cancer. Well, if you have cancer and you have spikes of stress, you will see a difference in your blood test. You will feel that difference. No one can know what you're feeling but yourself. So for me, it came right down to um, being truthful and honest with myself. What is it I'm thinking? How am I eating? Um, have I stopped doing the exercise that I used to do because I, I got too like um, um, caught up in work, etc. I had to be really truthful and honest because at the end of the day, it's, it's just me, myself and I. It's not about me and the doctors. It's just the person going through the cancer. So multiple myeloma is something that is quite, is quite tricky. But um, the technique, the holistic approach is, can be applied to any cancer whether it's um, um, you know, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, et cetera. Let's talk about that when we come back from a break. Will you stick with me, Sass? Love you. I'd love to. Awesome. We're talking to Sass Edwards in Toulouse, France. She is the host of Real Health Talk, and she's a cancer mindset coach. If you've been listening, there's some important messages in this conversation, and I hope that you are listening and will share this with your friends. She's also a motivational speaker, and obviously you can hear from her voice that she has plenty of motivation. You are listening to the Mark White Show and the Mary Faye Hedrick Good Deed segment, and I am your host, Mark White. A tiny price to pay. Let's all do something good today. A little wink, a pat on the back. A big old hug, a little laugh We can make a difference, all we have to do is try Every day's a chance to change somebody else's life Let's all do something good today Hi, I'm Crystal Gale, and you're listening to The Mark White Show, and... One smile can make a difference. Na 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 Someone loves you, I do. Hi, this is Maddie from Mama Nims. And this is Amy. Come on out to Mama Nims and have some ribeye steaks, hamburger steaks, pine raised catfish, whole fish or fillets, made from scratch, homemade, the best in the world ever, apple pies, fresh desserts. Y'all come by and see us. Thank you, Amy and Maddie. I would like to encourage you to go to Mama Nims in Anderson, Alabama, 256-800-4003. Check them out on Facebook at Mama Nims, M-A-M-A-N-E-M-S. Just like Mama's cooking, we put the love in it. Thompson Roofing and Construction is a locally owned family business serving the North Alabama and Southern Tennessee area. They are a Better Business Bureau A-plus member since 2011 and a GAF Master Elite Contractor. Give them a call at 256-952-3309 or check them out on the web at 256roofing.com. They offer free inspections. Thompson Roofing and Construction. It's bow time. Down here, pimento cheese is pretty much its own food group. So when fans told Bojangles to bring back our legendary spread, we did them one better and also fired up a gooey, golden, melty, molten, pourable pimento sauce. So now you can spread it thick across your favorite biscuit, pour it over seasoned fries, stir it into mac and cheese, or dip Supremes in it. Because with four ways to eat our pimento cheese, the recommended daily servings just became yes. It's bow time. 
Located in Tuscumbia, Alabama, the Alabama Music Hall of Fame honors Alabama's music achievers. You can even go into the recording studio and try out your talents as a singer. That's the Alabama Music Hall of Fame located at 617 Highway 72 West in Tuscumbia, Alabama. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Give them a call at 256-381-4417. Check them out on the web at alamhof.org. Welcome back to the Mark White Show. I am your host, Mark White. Right now I'm talking to Sass Edwards. She is the host of Real Health Talk, and she is a cancer mindset coach. She's also a motivational speaker. If you listened in the last segment, we talked about her own experience with cancer. Let's talk about some of these steps that you took and this holistic approach and what you did for listeners so that they understand the basic concepts of your plan. So, um, first of all, uh, there's these three simple steps which everyone can put into practice uh, who have cancer or even people who don't have cancer. You don't have to wait till you have it to put these steps into practice. So the first one is um, the food intake, all right? Um, nonetheless, I mean, it's suffice to say, Mark, that so many people are undernourished or mal- malnutrition, should I say. We're eating, we're not hungry, but we're not feeding our body you know we're eating fast food we're eating um, processed food and in fact there's no food in there it's just things that's filling your stomach like yeast you feel full but you're undernourished should I say and I I mean I'm not going to blame my parents but I was brought up to, to understand that you have to have starch protein protein being meat or fish on your plate and a little bit of vegetable so there's always one main uh, ingredient, which is usually the um, the meat. And you have a little bit of starch, a little bit of veg. And I grew up like that, but everyone's different. Everyone's body is going to react differently. When your body tells you that it has cancer, when it wakes up to cancer, basically it is saying that the way you've been treating me all your life, I don't like. You have to change something. And you have to change something for life. So if I've been living like that for 40 years and then cancer wakes up or develops, then for the next 40 years, I'm going to be eating completely differently for the rest of my life. So the food intake is the key. And number two, obviously, is um, sport. Natural sport doesn't have to be intense, crazy sport where you become a bodybuilder and, and whatnot. It just, you know, every single day, a minimum of 20 minutes of brisk walking, some people like jogging. I don't like jogging. I, I love brisk walking. Every single day. Like in the past, we didn't have cars and we used to be a little bit more active on our legs and our feet. We'd be working our muscles. We'd be taking a lot more oxygen. Today's the opposite. We drive everywhere. Uh, we don't have time um, for, you know, for our body to do sport. We don't have time for our thoughts. We are so stressed that we deprive our brain of oxygen. The complete opposite of what the body needs. So food intake, sport, and number three is the mindset. This is what people neglect. We just think that, you know, you get up, you go to work, you you get stressed in the traffic, uh, you get home, you wait for payday, (laughs) the end of the month, and the stress starts all over again. How am I gonna pay for this? How am I gonna pay for that? So the mindset is, for me, the, the, is vital. How you think, how you see yourself, In the past, people probably used to pray a lot more. I'm not saying you have to pray, but just take it in the past. We would go to church. We would pray. We would confess. We would come to grips with who we are. Today, that is less and less like on the cards. People are more focused on just working, maybe earning money, Um, maybe not as spiritual as before, that there's something greater. There's a bigger picture. There's someone else we can talk to. And so I think 
getting to, to grips with who we are, why we're here, feeding your thoughts. So like you've heard of the law of attraction, maybe you've heard of vision boarding, um, creating your, your picture. All of this, three things together, is what is going to create um, a holistic approach and a healthy body. And I think it's really important for people to take back the power of their body. The body, we don't give our body to medicine when we're alive. We do that when we, when, when we die. You sign it off. But when you're alive, it's your body. You decide how you want to live. You don't want to be surviving. You want to be living healthily. So we need to take back the power and give back our body what it needs to live healthily in this world. When I listen to you talk and I think about power, I think as human beings, we're programmed that all the power is external. What we witness or what we see is the power out there somewhere else. We don't think about power inside of ourselves and having that particular quality within ourselves. Power is everything around us, but it's not necessarily us. That's it. And it's, it's, it's such a shame because people give all that power to the doctors and the doctors, we you know, they're just doing a job. They, they've been to school. They've just learned a job and they're doing the best they can. They're amazing. I love uh, what medicine can do today. It is incredible. However, you have been living with you all these years. There's no one on the earth that knows you better than yourself, not even your parents. If you've been living in your body, then you know your body better than any, anyone who's got a doctor up. So it's important to take back that power and say, hold on, I know myself. You know what makes you sick. You know what gives you a headache. You know um, what gives you a stomach ache. You know what you should be avoiding for yourself. Again, each body is different. The cells in each body is going to be different. If I eat fast food, it might have a, a terrible impact on my body, whereas it won't have an impact on yours. Somebody might be a smoker and never develop cancer. I'm not a smoker and I develop cancer. So each, each body is different. So you need to know what works for your body. You need to be truthful and honest about that. And our power has to be stronger than the power of the McDonald's. <laughs> if we think about <laughs> the fact that we're choosing these foods, we're giving those exactly. items the power. If we eat a double cheeseburger and an extra large fries, we chose to eat that and we gave that the power as opposed to finding the power within us to choose something different. Exactly. Now, I used to be a big McDonald's eater. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a big fast food eater. And so when my, when my body um, manifested with cancer, there was a message there. There was something saying, hello, what you're giving me, I don't like. I don't need that. It's not good for me. Change your way of eating. Now, I must say, Mark, over six years, I was in remission um, and I was um, happy. I, I actually forgot I had cancer. Towards the end of this, the fifth year in remission, I kind of like started um, to, you know, forget that I had cancer. So I stopped doing the sport. I stopped doing my dance. I used to be a dancer. I stopped doing the juicing. I was like, well, I don't need to anymore. You know, cancer's dormant. Um, I went back to the stressful lifestyle in the job that I had. In, in fact, I went back to the person I was before. And the cancer woke up again in 2019. Now, that was a huge shock because um, I was like, what? I'm a mindset coach. How can it wake up? <laughs> you know, I felt totally guilty. And then I had to be truthfully honest with myself. And I said to myself, what am I doing now that I had stopped doing when I went into remission? Or what was I doing when I was in remission that I've started doing it again today? And truthfully, I was like, oh, my, when was the last time I properly took up sport on a regular basis, every day, a little something? When was the last time I juiced? When was the last time, you know, I, I got back to meditation? So, again, I was like, this is the way I have to live and, you know, and incorporate it not for a couple of years, but for life. Uh, incorporate a different way of living. So today I'm going into a vegan lifestyle. It actually wasn't difficult. Funnily enough, I thought it would be. I've been like this for a year and I love it. I'm, you know what, Mark? I make my burgers vegan burgers i make my fries with um sweet potato there's so <laughs> many things that i've changed i didn't even like to cook before now i love it when i drink a glass of alcohol so i used to love a lot of alcohol 
when I have a glass of alcohol, it goes straight to my head. I get a headache. So I drink less and less, maybe once a month. Whereas before, it would be like two glasses a day. And so my whole lifestyle is changing. I meditate every single day. Life has become fun. It's no longer about surviving or trying to get through the day, trying to get to the weekend and breathe at the end. It's now become fun for me. It's almost like I'm starting to understand the, the pieces of the puzzle and I'm opening these, these keys. I'm like, okay, I get it. So a message for me was being to listen to my body and to let go of any resistance that I had and to fully um, you know, embody the new me. So everything has changed. Incredible. I knew there was a reason I was going to be talking to you today, Sass. <laughs> <laughs> and this is an amazing conversation that we're having. And I really think about real health and real health talk. Sometimes we're not getting the real health talk in our conversations about our daily lives. We just do it. We go through the motions we take the steps that we do every single day and have done, as you said, for years, and we That's get it. into a routine, and we're talking about simply changing our minds to change our bodies and to snap out of that routine and find a new path. That's right. That's right. It's, it's so important. Today, I personally, um, so although chemo didn't work back in the past, Radiotherapy didn't, didn't work. The doctors uh, have a new treatment that I started. I was skeptical. I was like, why put my body through that? But it's a different one. It's, it's actually not a chemo that makes your hair fall. It's one that you can actually go back to work with. So I said to the doctors, I will do this on the condition that I can continue um, doing my holistic approach, which means juicing um, from time to time, um, incorporating my supplements a supplement with um, nutritional supplements to make sure my body gets all the vitamins. They said, sure, no problem. And I've had tremendous result with these two together. So it's traditional um, approach and holistic approach together. So for some cancers, just holistic will be enough. So there's no right or wrong. There's what, what works best for the person. And I found that this works great for me. The doctors are always, they're always baffled. <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about juicing and we talk about the items that would go into a juice like that, what are some examples that would go into the juicing process? Oh, so we're going to, there's like um, a few recipes. There's one where you're going to put two apples. So all this in the same juicer, two apples. You're going to put um, half um, of a broccoli, not broccoli. Yeah half of the stem of broccoli, just the stem, not the flower parts, the stem, half of zucchini, if you call it zucchini in America, we yes. call it courgette, <laughs> um, <laughs> half of a celery stem. Um, what else? The, it looks like that's a green juice. You're going to have lots of greens. So you juice that all. The juice that comes out, you're going to add that into a mixer where you're going to put half of an avocado and you're going to blend it all together so it comes out thick and creamy. Because you have the, the apples, um, the juice of the apples, it makes it sweet. Because you'll think like celery, um, broccoli, <laughs> that's going to be sour. Yes. But trust me, <laughs> with the apples, it's quite sweet and it's delicious. And each day, you're going to have uh, different juices. It's going to be like um, beetroot uh, with carrots. And, you know, that's very sweet as it is. So you have to mix the vegetables with the fruit. It's not just fruit on its own. Otherwise, you have too much sugar. And it's not just a vegetable. You've got to get the right mixture. Um, and you're going to have like four to five juices a day. So you're not going to feel hungry. And I just do it for five days. That's enough for me. Five days. So if you have cancer, do that every month for five days only. That's what I would advise. Um, and then, you know, you're, over a year, you'll see your, your blood test results start to change. Or maybe even less than that. Some people have excellent results in, in in um, a couple of months. It just depends on the body, on the body, on the person. It's interesting because as I listen, I know that there are listeners who are thinking juicing. I have been eating what I want for so long and you're talking about juicing. It has to be palatable. <laughs> Somebody has to feel <laughs> that it can go into their mouth and into their stomach and that they will not throw up. I know what people are yes. thinking because we have this mindset. If we've eaten 
these processed foods for so long and suddenly somebody says, oh, take a stem of broccoli and a stalk of celery (laughs) and put all this together with some apples. It is completely different from going to the store, picking up some chicken fingers, French fries, and some special sweet sauce that we're going to dip everything in. Full of pesticides. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So you're right. You're right. It's, It's a mindset game. Cancer is a mindset game. If you don't work your mindset, you don't say to yourself, this is doing me great. This is the tree of life. This is helping me. If you don't put it in the right mindset and you think of it like, ugh, I'm drinking juice and broccoli. This is disgusting. <laughs> then you're not going to have the right result. <laughs> you have to work the mind. The mindset's the key. <laughs> Sass, I want you to share how people can connect with you. I want people to know how they can read how to unlock cancer all these different tools that you have i want you to share with listeners right now so that they can take this conversation a step further if they would like to okay so you can find me on instagram under sas.edwards uh destiny tuning so destiny tuning is is the uh the technique that i use to rewire the brain to put you in the correct mindset uh, you can also find me on Facebook under the same sas.edwards destiny tuning. And yes, I do have um, an online publication called How to Unlock Cancer, which is a coaching process with PDFs and videos, um, which is followed by a, a mini course of Take Back the Power of Your Body. And this will help you step out of victim mode. This will help you really um, you rewire your brain, get into who you are, and visualize differently. It's an excellent technique. It's not very long, but it works because it worked for me. So I'd love to be able to share this with with people. So on Instagram, you'll find the link to that publication in my bio, um, and it's how to unlock cancer. Have you ever heard of the program Dead Doctors Don't Lie? No. Okay. Not at all. This has just popped into my head. I remember Granddaddy was given the program Dead Doctors Don't Lie, I remember he was venturing into things like you're talking about, and he was buying apple cider vinegar, doing all these different things that he could find. I think people were sharing different information with him, and he was trying those things. And I just want to say that if my granddaddy was trying those things, he was a very wise man. Sometimes we need to think outside of the box. If you have impending death and you know that that's coming and that's your mindset, then what does it hurt to give those other opportunities a shot? Exactly. Exactly. There's there's so so many things, you know, for us to live healthily. We are from this earth. Um, everything on the earth is for us. So that the fruit, the vegetables, the herbs, it's all there. In fact, there's there's no surprise. It's 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 just a bit sad that we turned away from this natural way of eating. And we've incorporated a totally chemical way of nourishing ourselves. We turn to the chemicals first before we turn to um, the natural therapy. We turn to a, a doctor first before we turn to the person who created us. <laughs> you know, it's just like we're, we're, we've got a little bit lost. But everything we need is in front of us. This idea and concept, I hope that there's somebody right now listening who is taking this all in, deciding that they have some options, because I don't want people to feel that there is no hope. That is the worst feeling in the world, is to feel hopeless and that you're trapped and there is no way out from the situation that you're experiencing. I want people to realize that there is hope in this life at whatever they're dealing with across the board, whether it's cancer, depression, anything that you have gone through or experienced. We have it within ourselves, the power within ourselves to overcome those challenges. We give all these external things power when internally we do have an amazing strength and an amazing ability if we tap into it. We do. With the human body, the human mind is incredible. It's incredible, Mark. We have the potential to self-heal. We cut ourselves. The body will heal on its own. That's, that's, um, that's magic. We can grow a, a, a person inside us. That's magic. The, the human body is incredible, and the mindset is also incredible. So there's always hope. I will say to myself, it's not over until it's over. 
<laughs> it's not true. over until you decide. If I've decided that I'm going to live healthfully and I'm going to not, not fight, because don't, I don't like the word fight. Fight is aggressive. But I'm going to learn from cancer. I'm even going to learn to love cancer because it's giving me a message I need. So love it, thank it, forgive it. And when you let go of this resistance, then life can begin. So yes, Mark, there is hope. Sass, I appreciate your time today and you're welcome on the Mark White Show anytime. I appreciate you sharing your message and I hope that people will listen and will follow you on Instagram and check out the book, How to Unlock Cancer and simply type in a name and an email address and receive a digital copy of the book through your email. And then also they can go to the website destinytuning.net destinytuning.net and check out more information about what you're doing and they can on the instagram follow your own interviews through real health talk and listen to this mindset change and i hope that somebody today will be awakened to this possibility and that it puts their life on a path that you have gone down i'm here anyway if anybody needs me if they need to 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 talk they need any advice uh they need any coaching I'm here for them, and uh, it was a pleasure being on your show, Mark. Thank you so much. Would you like to give out your email address? Of course. So it's tuningdestiny at gmail.com. Tuningdestiny at (laughs) gmail.com. Folks, we've been talking to Sass Edwards in Toulouse, France. We appreciate her time today, and I hope that you will find that it helps make a difference in your life. Real Health Talk, you can check that out. That is her podcast chat show she's a cancer mindset coach a motivational speaker check out destinytuning.net find out more information about how to unlock cancer i hope that this program has helped you today and i hope that you'll tune in next time you have been listening to another edition of the mark white show and the mary faye hedrick good deed segment and i am your host mark white talking about a Special kind of hero, hero, no ordinary hero, talking about a hero, special kind of hero. Hi, I'm Kyla Carter, and you're listening to The Mark White Show. Stay unique. And find a way to make a difference that doesn't just impact you, but impacts others around you. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are I dreamed I held you in my arms But when I woke, dear, I was mistaken So I hung my head and I cried Please don't tell